Good evening, everyone. I'm indeed happy and glad to be here with you tonight. I want to thank the Southern Regional Convention for sending the invitation for me to come. And I accepted their invitation. And I'm very glad that I did. I also want to thank them for their choosing a very beautiful site and the things that they have done to us and for us. I appreciate everything that has been done. I hold this teaching very, very dear to my heart. The things that I hope to convey to you are things that the founder of this school taught me. As one that set at his foot, I appreciate that honor. And I'm going to ask that you uh, bear with me for a few minutes. I want to try to cover some things that I have great concern about. The founder of this school claimed he had a divine vision and revelation. And he proved that to me. I stand here as a witness that that was proven that he had to have a vision and a revelation. And then he came down and he illustrated on these charts what he saw in the vision. Somebody, I know one time we had a gentleman in our class that wanted to have the same vision Dr. Kinley had. He already showed the vision. He put it out here on the charts. Now, when I came into school, I didn't know anything about the Bible. I said that from a standpoint that I didn't go to school much and go to church that much in the sense of uh, studying and, and, and uh, being a teacher there. But now what I want you to do with me is now, he came down and he told us some things that we had to definitely go by. Let me have Isaiah 8 and 20. <clears throat> to the law, and to now, the testimony. Now he said, now to the law and to the testimony. Now he said, now Dr. Kennedy said, now this is not him saying it. This is not Isaiah saying it. He said, it is Yahweh saying to the law and to the testimony. Read. If they speak not according to this word. If they speak not according to this word. It is because there is no light in them. It is, no, it is because there's no light in them. Then he took us over to John. Uh, John 5 and 39. Ye search the scriptures. Then he said the Messiah was challenged by the people of that day, the rulers of that day, why he was doing the things he was doing. And this is what he told them. Ye search the scriptures. Read. For in them ye think ye have eternal life. For in them ye think you have eternal life. Read. And they are they which testify of me. And they are they which testify of me. Now he was saying that the scriptures testify of him. Then he went over to Luke. When he raised from the dead, he appeared to his disciples and he told them the same thing. Let me have Luke 24, 25. Then he said unto them, Then he said unto them, O fools and, o slow, fools and slow of heart, to believe all that the prophets have spoken. To believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Messiah to have suffered these things? Ought not the Messiah to have suffered? And to enter into his glory? And to enter into his glory. And beginning at Moses. Now he began with Moses. And all the prophets. And all the prophets. He expounded unto them in all the scriptures. The things concerning himself. The things concerning himself. Now, this is, he's showing that the scriptures are what testified of him. And the founder went about it and he said, Now, if I don't come, I didn't come to disagree with what Moses wrote. I didn't come to disagree with what the prophets wrote or what the apostles wrote or what the Messiah come to do. He said, I came to prove and put them all together that you might know that what, he's, what Yahweh had written in these scriptures or said is true. He said, now look, let me have uh, John 5 and uh, 45. 
Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. Now he said, do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuses you. Now he's talking to the Jews there. He said, do not think that I accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuses you. Read. Even Moses in whom ye trust. Even Moses in whom you trust. Now he's, Messiah is talking about a Moses. He's the one that's going to accuse them. Read. For had ye believed Moses. For had ye believed Moses. He would have believed me. Then you would have believed me. For he wrote of me. Because Moses wrote of him. Now that would mean that if I go over in the writings of Moses, which is the first five books of the Bible, I should find something in there that's writing about the Messiah. If you had the King James Version of the Bible, they were saying that in the King James Version, his name is Jesus. You go over in, in the Matthew, I mean over in Genesis, through Deuteronomy, you won't find Jesus there. But you do find that this man, Moses, wrote about one, Joshua. Dr. Kenneth came to us and showed us that, that this Joshua that came through the loins of the Virgin Mary, he was back here with Moses. And now that's why he said, Moses wrote of me. Let me have it. Exodus 17 and 9. And Moses said unto Joshua. Moses said unto Joshua. This is the first time you find Moses writing about Joshua. Now Joshua, you come, we come to find out that this Joshua that is back here, that the songs written about him, this man Joshua is back here. Yahweh had taken, to, well, Moses, let's, let's look at, read what you got there first before I go on. And Moses said unto Joshua. And Moses said unto Joshua. Choose us out men. Choose us out men. And go out. And go out. Fight with Amalek. And fight with Amalek. So he has taken, Joshua is going out to fight with Amalek. <coughs> He's being a warrior. Choose us out men and go and fight. And I thought about the Messiah when he coming through the loins of the Virgin Mary. He then he chose out his disciples and sent them out to preach the gospel. So he chose them out to, to go out and fight. Now here you have the, Moses back here. He chose Joshua to go out and fight for him. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with I, the rod of Elohim. I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of Elohim. In my hand. In my hand. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him. Joshua did as Moses had said unto him. And fought with Amalek. And he fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur. Moses, Aaron, and Hur. Went up to the top of the hill. Went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass. It came to pass. When Moses held up his hand. When Moses held up his hand. That Israel prevailed. Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand. When Moses' hand got tired. Amalek prevailed. Then Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy. His hands got heavy. And they took a stone and put it under him. Took a stone and put it under him. And he sat thereon. He sat down thereon. And Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands. Aaron was on one side and Hur was on the other side. He stayed up his hand. The now you look back here and you see in the pattern you got these two cherubims of glory sitting on each side and Joshua sitting on the mercy seat. So he said they're setting the same thing back up. Now, while that was done, Joshua was out there conquering the Amalek's. Read. The one on the one side. The one on the one side. And the other on the other side. The other one on the other side. Read. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. Uh-huh. Read. And Joshua discomfited Amalek. Now, Joshua discomfited Amalek. And his people with the edge of the sword. With the edge of a sword. And Yahweh, That means he was fighting on Israel's behalf. Now, if you go, uh, uh, that's, that's, now that's, uh, read on, I got to get some, I want to get another point down there before I go on. Read on. And Yahweh said unto Moses. Yahweh said unto Moses. Write this for a memorial in now a Now, he book. said, write this. Now, remember the Messiah said that Moses wrote about me. Now, that's, Moses is writing the law. And he said, Moses is writing about me. So here he is telling Moses to write this in a book. And rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. And, worse, and her, rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. Now, there's no J in the Hebrew alphabet, so his name was Joshua. 
So they've shown that Joshua was back here with Moses, and Moses was writing about it. Now, when the Messiah comes to the loins of the Virgin Mary, he said, I'm coming to fulfill what's in the law and in the prophets. Now, if this is Moses to writing about him back here in the wilderness, and that's Joshua back here, or Joshua back here delivering the children of the land of Egypt, going through the divided waters of the Red Sea, into the wars, and then on through the River Jordan, on into Canaan land, then there's got to be some way to verify that in the prophets. It's no good just speaking about Moses wrote about it. It's got to be confirmed by the prophets. Well, what prophet wrote about it? What prophet confirmed it? That Joshua was back here with Moses. How do you prove that? Give me Isaiah 63 and 1. Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Bozrah? This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. Now repeat that again, please. Now note what you have there. Read that first part again. Who is this that cometh from Edom? Who Edom. is this that cometh from Edom? From Edom. With dyed garments from Bozrah. With dyed garments from Bozrah. What do you have after that? This that is glorious. Right, what is the mark you have after that? Question mark. You got a question mark. He says, who is this? Who's he talking about? I've heard a lot of things being said. He's not talking about Adam. He's not talking about Elohim. He is talking about Elohim manifested in a body. Joshua. Who is this that come from Eden with dyed garments from Bozar, traveling the greatness of his strength? Question mark. Read. This that is glorious in his apparel. This that is glorious in his apparel. What he's wearing. Read. Traveling in the greatness of his strength. Traveling in the greatness of his strength. Read. I that speak now, in there was a question there. There was a question mark there too. See? Then the answer came back, I that speaketh in righteousness, mighty to save. Now what do you mean by that? How are you seeing that? What is, John, what is Isaiah looking at? He's looking back and seeing this Joshua coming up about the land of Egypt, through the body of waters of the Red Sea. He's fighting for Israel in Egypt. He's fighting for them in the waters. He's taking them all across the River Jordan on into Canaan. That's him walking down through there. That's him delivering them out of there. He's fighting with them. Somebody said, wait a minute. Let's check this out a little closer. It says, who is this that comes from Edom? Adam was not in Edom. So he's not talking about Adam. Who is this that come from Edom with, with dyed garments from Bozoir? Now if you take a time and get in your map, look in the back of your Bibles that have maps in it, you'll find that there uh, you find that in when the children of Israel came up out of the land of Egypt, they had to come up through the wilderness, and they had to go around Edom. Edom is a country. Bozart is the capital of the country. And they had to go up there and go through that land to go. But when it came to Edom, the Edomites would not let them go through. Let me have... Uh, well, let's, let's, let's find out who, uh, who is Edom. Let's find out who Edom is first. See, give me Genesis 25, 25. You find where Esau, where Jacob and Esau were born in the 25th chapter. I'm, 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 I've got to move because my time is running to get way on me. And the first came out red well, all over with a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. They called his name Esau. And after that came his brother out. Then after, after Esau came forth his brother. And his, and his hand took hold of Esau's heel. Uh -huh. 
and his name was called Jacob. And his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was three score years old uh -huh. when she bare them. When she bare them. And the boys grew. And the boys and the boys grew. Okay. And now Esau, here you got two sons born, twins, Esau and Jacob. Esau came out red and hairy. Jacob came out with smooth skin. But I skip down to the, I don't have time to read over there, but skip down to the, th to the 30th verse. 30th verse. Mm -hmm. And Esau said to Jacob. Esau said to Jacob. Let me swallow down, I pray thee. Let me swallow down, I pray thee. Some of that same red pottage. Some of that same red pottage. For I am faint. For I am faint. He's come out of the fields. He's hungry. He says, give me some of that porridge, for I'm faint. Read. Therefore, his name was called Edom. Therefore, his name was called Edom. So Esau's name was called Edom. They became to be known as the Edomites. The Edom. That was a country that just south of the Dead Sea. The River Jordan came down. Now, the River Jordan, we got illustrated on this chart this way. It actually runs north and south. When you look on a map, it's running north and south. They had to come up through the Edomites. The capital is Bozoir, see? And he's got to come by them. Now, when Moses went to go into there, he asked about going in there. Give me numbers, 20 and uh, 20, uh, numbers 20 and 20. 20 and 14. Okay, 24, that's right, 20 and 14, right. messengers from Kadesh unto the king of Now, Edom. wait a minute, who says now? Who said, who said what? And Moses, Moses sent messengers sent messengers from Kadesh uh -huh. unto the king of Edom. Unto the king of Edom. Thus saith thy brother Israel. Thus said thy brother Israel, which is Jacob. Read. Thou knowest all the travail that hath befallen us. Uh -huh. How our fathers went down into Egypt. Now he's asking his he's asking to go through his brother's country, Edom, who is who is uh, Esau. Read. He's asking a question to go through him, to go through his country. He said, "I won't touch you. I won't touch your land. I'm just going to go straight through your land. Don't want to touch." Read, read it down real quick so we can get and understand what's going on. How our fathers went down into Egypt, mm -hmm. and we have dwelt in Egypt a long time. We have dwelt in Egypt a long time. Read. And, and the Egyptians vexed us, and, and our the Egyptians fathers. have vexed us. And when we cried unto Yahweh, when he we heard cried our voice. in Egypt, when we cried unto Yahweh, he heard our voice. He heard our voice. And sent an angel. And sent an angel. That angel I want you to show is that Joshua, or Yahshua, back here with Egypt. Read. And has brought us forth out of Egypt. And has brought us forth out of Egypt. Read. And behold, we are in Kadesh. And behold, we are in, in Kadesh, as a town right outside the borders of Edom. Read. A city in the uttermost of thy borders. Mm -hmm. Let us pass, I pray thee, through thy country. Let us pass through thy country. Read. We will not pass through the fields. I will or not pass through the, through the vineyards. Fields, through the vineyards. Neither will we drink of the water of the wells. Neither will we, we drink will of the water of the wells. We will go by the king's highway. Mm -hmm. We will not turn to the right hand nor to the left right, until read. we have passed by thy borders. Uh -huh. And Edom said unto him. Edom said unto him. Thou shalt not pass by me. Thou shalt not pass by them. Lest I come now out who was with Moses? Huh? I asked the question. Who was with Moses? Joshua was back there with Moses. Now, he Edomites were not letting Israel, his own bro brother's offspring, come through that land. So they had to go around the Edomites and come up, and they fought with the Am uh, Amorites and the Moabites when they went up there in the Canaan land. Now, I'm telling you, he's fighting all that way. He overthrew the, Amor Am uh, the Amorites and the uh, Moab. And then he went on over to the river Jordan, on over in the Canaan land, and he's fought with them for 40 years over the land of Canaan land. Now, he's fighting all that way. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Joshua, 12th chapter. See, now, what I'm trying to show you is this Joshua back here with Moses, Isaiah the prophet, he's prophesied looking back at this and seeing them come up through here. 
and they had to fight all their way through this here land, and Joshua was fighting for them. If you go back again, Exodus 24, Exodus 14, 14, uh, 13 and 14, you'll find, give me Exodus 13 and 14. So you see what Moses says down here with, him, with Israel. And it shall be when thy son asketh thee in time to come, uh -huh. saying, What is this that thou shalt say unto him? Where, where, where are you at? Uh, Exodus 13 and 14. No, uh, no 14, 14, 14, 14, 13. I had to reverse. 14, 13. Mm -hmm. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not. Fear ye not. Stand still. Stand still. And see the salvation of Yahweh. See the salvation of Yahweh. Which he will show to you today. He will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, mm -hmm. ye shall see them again no more forever. Uh -huh. Right. Yahweh shall fight for you. Yahweh shall fight for you. And, and I'm trying to show you that this Yahweh was in this man Joshua back here. He's fighting their battles. He's the one that delivered them out of the land of Egypt. He's the one that went on into the world. He won and fought the Amaleks, Amaleks back here. He's the one that went on around and fought all their battles. And then he gave the land to the Israelites. He's fighting their battles right back here. Now he said, now I, this is Isaiah. He's the one prophet. I'm, I'm still with Isaiah 8 and 2, Isaiah 50, uh, 6 and, I mean Isaiah 63. Isaiah, the prophet, is a pre exiled prophet. That means he was not a prophet that was taken into captive. He was before they were taken into Babylon. So he was not talking about being delivered from the Babylonians. He was talking about them. He's looking back to see them being delivered out of the land of Egypt. So he's trying to show you he's coming on up out of this way. Now this Joshua is the one fighting their battles. Now he fought over here on this side of the River Jordan. He killed two kings over here. Then he went on through the River Jordan. He went on into Canaan land. And you find he killed 31 kings. Give me Joshua 12th chapter. <clears throat> Give me about the 6th verse. And then I'm going to skip down. To the last verse. Joshua. Then did Moses the servant of Yahweh uh -huh. and the children of Israel smite. And Moses the servant of Yahweh gave it for a possession unto the Reubenites and the Gadites. Now see they gave the land that they had conquered on this side of the river Jordan to the Reuben. The, uh, repeat again. Repeat for again. For a possession unto the Reubenites unto and the, the Gadites Reubenites. and the half tribe of Manasseh. Reubenites and, Man and Manasseh, and a half, a half tribe of Manasseh. And, he, the, and these are the kings of the country which Joshua and the children of Israel smote on this site, Jordan, on the west. On this side of Jordan, on the west. And then they, they had to go across the river Jordan, go on the other side, and he had to smite the kings on this side. See? Now, in that chapter, you'll find that there was five kings he went up against right there. I don't have time to read it all down. See? He's fighting those kings over there. I mean, pardon me, it's in the 10th chapter, pardon me. He fought those five kings. But now, give me the last verse of the 12th chapter. The king of Tisra won. Uh, the king of Tisra. Now, if you read that whole chapter down, you'll find that all the kings that they smote in the land of Canaan land. So if you're reading the last of them, now read. All the kings, 30 and 1. All the kings, 30 and 1. So you got two on this side and 31 on the other side. That makes a total of 33. He had 33 kings he slain. See? Now here's Isaiah looking back at it. And he's coming back talking about who is this that come from Edom with dyed garments from Bozar. Now here he's coming up through this land. Now, give me, let's, let's verify, make sure we understand we got who we're talking about. Isaiah 34 and 5. For my sword shall be bare. Now here he says, this is Yahweh speaking to the prophet Isaiah. And Isaiah, Yahweh is causing Isaiah to look back and see this here fight, this battle goes on in Bozoar. So I, my, ba my sword is bathed in heaven. Read. Behold, it shall come down upon Edoma. Behold, it shall come down on the Edom. Edom. And upon the now, people. Now here is a, another word for Edom. If you're checking the margin of translation, if you have a good Bible, tell you that uh, Edom is a uh, is Edom. So he's talking about the same people. Read. And upon the people of my curse and, to and judgment. Upon, uh, don't tell my curse to judgment. Read. 
The sword of Yahweh is filled with blood. The sword of Yahweh is filled with blood. So now the blood that you got, and his garments being stained, was stained from the blood of, of the mighty ones he killed in these wars he had. So he's saying of all these kings, and he's got blood on his garments. That's why Isaiah said, Behold, see, who is this that come from Eden with dyed garments from Bozar? See, uh, <coughs> Marvel's in his apparel. See, and with his own arm, he brought salvation down. With his own arm, he brought salvation. Now, it was Joshua by himself. He brought salvation down. Now, watch where he's going, how he's going to do it. See, read. The sword of Yahweh is filled with blood. Uh -huh. It is made fat with fatness uh -huh. and with the blood of the lambs and, and with, goats, uh -huh. with the fat of the kidneys of rams. For Yahweh had the sacrifice in Bozrah. For Yahweh had a, sac a great sacrifice in Bozrah. So he, showing he went through there and he killed the people up in, that, in Bozrah to come up, up, up through the land of Warrens, uh, see, on into Canaan and slay He enslaved all these kings. Now, this Joshua, coming all the way up through, you find he was 30 years old down here, 40 years in the war, that's 70. See, another 40 years in conquering the land of Canaan, that's 110. Now, he went through and fought all those kings, didn't get a scratch, then he laid down and died. Now, here comes the Messiah. See? Because this was him back down here. He's coming in to fulfill. And he had to say, now, why did that all that happen? Because he's got to come in to fulfill. And give me uh, John 15 and uh, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, 17. These things have I commanded you that you love No, one it's up a little higher. I want to, uh, uh, no, John, probably John 10. And pick it up at the 13th verse, pardon me. <clears throat> the hireling fleeth, because he is a hireling, uh -huh. and careth not for the sheep. Read. I am the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. And know my sheep. I know my sheep. And am known of mine. And I am known of them. Read. As the Father knoweth me. As the Father knoweth me. Even so know I the Father. Even so know I the Father. Read. And I lay down my life for now the sheep. Now here's the Messiah said, I lay down my life for the sheep. Read. And other sheep I have. Other sheep I have referred to the Gentiles. Read. Which are not of this fold. Which is not of this fold. Them also I must bring. Them also I must bring. Read. And they shall hear my voice. They shall hear my voice. And there shall be one fold uh -huh. and one shepherd. Uh -huh. Therefore doth my father love me. Therefore does my father love me. Because I lay down my life. Because I lay down my life. That I might take it again. That I might take it again. No now man, no man took his life. He laid it down. And he was able to take it up again. When they came down, when they come down to ask for the body of the Messiah, Herod was surprised that the Messiah was already dead. And they went out and pushed him in the side. But he had already given up the ghost. So now what I'm trying to show you, no man took his life. See, but he laid it down on his own. And Yahweh was able to take him up. That's why Joshua back here in the type prefiguring the Messiah, he had to go through and fight all these battles. Now it doesn't stop there. See, give me Revelation, 19th chapter. Pick it up at the, oh, John on the Isle of Papas. He's looking back at it. Oh, boy, that's a whole lot in that thing. See, when you read over there in the fifth chapter of John, Revelation, John, he said he saw a man sitting on the throne, and he had a book in his hand, and the book was sealed with seven seals. And then he saw that these book was, was filled with, uh, was sealed with seven seals. And he looked, said he searched uh, heaven. He looked in the earth and didn't find nobody worthy to open the book and to loose the seals. See, and then he says, he heard one of the elders say, uh, behold the lamb of the tribe, uh, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the lamb that will open the book and loose the seals. Now he opened that book and loose, who's that? This is Joshua Messiah. He was the lamb. Open that book up. What did he do? He come down and fulfill what was in the law and in the prophets. That was the book that was sealed. And when he fulfilled the law of the prophets, he was the one to open that up. Now the book is open up. And then you come on down. And you find over there in the 10th chapter, you find that book was open up. Now he had a little book. And a, a man standing up there. He had his head his foot on the land and his other foot on the sea. He's got this little book. He said, uh, uh, John, <clears throat> an angel told him, go and take the book. 
and eat it. She said, take the book and eat it. It'd be sweet in thy mouth and bitter in thy stomach. And that was Yahweh showing him that he's got to go and preach the gospel on, over, on land and on sea. he got to go and preach on all portions. That's him opening that book, bringing that book all the way down, showing that this Joshua side is coming in. He's fulfilling what's in the law and he's fulfilling what's in the prophet. But this Joshua, here he is. He's looking back and he's seeing these here coming on up out of here. He got these here crowns. Now watch him back over in Revelation, pick it up there in the uh, 19th verse, 19th chapter. 13th verse, and he uh -huh. was clothed with a vesture. He was clothed blood. with a vesture. Dipped in blood. Dipped in blood. And I'm talking about this one fighting back here. Blood all over his clothes from slaying all the wars he had back there. Dipped in blood, read. And his name is called the Word of Yahweh. His name is called the Word of Yahweh. The Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with you. And here was the Word manifested in that body. And Joshua was, that, was Yahweh in a body back there with Moses, instructing Moses what to do and how to do it. And then when he comes to the loins of the Virgin Mary, he's down here fulfilling what he told him to do back there. See, read. And the armies which were in heaven The armies him. which were in heaven followed him upon white horses. They followed him upon white horses. Clothed in fine linen. Clothed in fine linen. White and clean. White and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp Look, sword. Look, it says out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. He didn't have a sword in his hand, but he had one in his mouth that went, see, cutting back and forth. And when you come preaching this gospel, it's hard for a man to accept this gospel because it's going to cut things that he thought he had to keep. He thought he had to keep water baptism, Lord's Supper, and foot washing, keep the, keep the Ten Commandments law. But see, you had to come down here and see the Messiah came in to fulfill that. That was the report. Oh, boy. Uh, the Isaiah, he also said, Isaiah 53 and 1. See, who's going to believe our report? Who's going to believe the report? Here's Yahweh sending his son down in the world. See, he's coming to deliver. He's saving Israel. Deliver him by the land of Egypt. Bring him through the water waters of the Red Sea. Bring him on through the wilderness. See, it's him fighting their battles. See, now read on there. I want to finish up in Revelation there. He and out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite you know, the nations. You know what? What verse you have, have you start with? 13 or? Yes. I have you start with 13? Go back up to the... The yeah, 12th verse, that's what I need. I missed it. 12th verse. Uh -huh. And his eyes were a flame of fire. Oh, his eyes was a flame of fire. And Read. on his head were many crowns. And on his head, that's what I wanted to get. On his head was many crowns. See how he picked up all those crowns back here? He picked up all the all those kings. Every time he overstayed the king, he got a crown. He got, he got his crown. So he's got all these crowns on his head. 31, 3 king crowns on his head. See, why? Because he's a king of kings. See, if he's king of kings, he's coming on down. And he sees he's coming on down to the law and the prophets to show that he was the one that f f set it up back here. He's the one that come down here. No man taketh my life, but I lay it down on my own, and I would take it up. So here he is. He was went on the cross. He gave up the ghost. And he took his body off the cross, put it in Joseph too. But that spirit that was in him, it went and preached to the captain, which was in distress. And it went on back and picked up Adam back here. Oh, let me say something else too. I want to say something because some people, they heard tapes of Dr. Kinley, and I've heard the tapes too. But I went and listened to them one more time because I want to make sure I got it right. And this is what I want you to see. See, it said, or go back to Isaiah. I want to get the, want to get the, actual, the actual quote, Isaiah, the 63rd chapter. Who is this that cometh from Eden uh -huh. with dyed garments from Bozrah? With dyed garments from Bozrah. Read. This, th this that is glorious in his apparel. This that is glorious in his apparel. Traveling in the greatness of his strength. Traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness. I that speak in righteousness. Mighty to say. Mighty to say. Stop right there and give me Isaiah 59 uh, and 16, please. So you're talking about coming and, in the strength. Mighty he, to say. Read. And he saw that there was no man. He saw that there was no man. And wondered that there was no intercessor. There was no intercessor. Read. Therefore his arm brought salvation up. Therefore unto him. his own arm brought salvation up. See, it was by himself, I'm trying to show you. He was by himself that brought him on up there. He fought their battles. And as Joshua's fighting your battles down here now, you're not fighting. See, you're not, an ever, uh, you're, not, you're not even a good soldier to go try to fight with Satan. 
It has to be Joshua. Yeah. He's got to stay that uh, uh, satanic spirit. Joshua is the one. Now, uh, go back over in, in uh, the 63rd chapter. So I'm trying to, try to show you that this one back here was this Joshua coming about the land of Egypt. And this Joshua, he fought their battles all the way through. There's other scriptures I need to read, but I don't have time to read them all. See, but read, uh, go, going Second back here. Second verse. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel, uh -huh. and thy garments like him that treadeth uh -huh. in the wine fat? Uh -huh. I have trodden the wine press alone. I have trodden the wine press alone. Read. And of the people that were, there was none. There was me. none. For I will tread them in mine anger. I'm going to tread them in my anger. He's and, I'm talking about the enemy. He's treading against them. Look, Bozar would not let him go through. He was angry with them. So when he ran, he, he was going to pour out his wrath upon them. So read. And trample them in my fury. Trample them in my fury. So the blood on his garments is from the blood that he fought in them battles that he fought. Read. And their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments. This gar their blood is going to be sprinkled upon my garments. Read. And I will stain all my raiment. Uh -huh. For the day of vengeance is in mine heart. Uh -huh. And the year of my redeemed is come. Read. And I looked, and there I was looked, none. And there was none. To help. To help. And I wondered. And then, then Dr. King would say, I, I, when he said, I looked, and there was none there. Just like there was Adam back there, there was none to help him bring it down. There was none to help Joshua bring it back up. He said, well, Adam brought it down by himself. Yeah. Messiah had to come, and he by his own self brought salvation up. So one man brought it down, another one bring Give me Paul's writing to the Romans in the fifth chapter of Romans. See, uh, by one man. Look, look, folks, I'll tell you something about this. I love this teaching. I like, it. I like to see the law and the prophets put together so you can see what's going on. See? See? Now, Dr. Kenny put this on the chart. See? This man back here in the garden. Romans 5, 12. Wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world. Now, Paul's writing this. Dr. Kenny's put it on the chart. He said, wherefore, by one man, sin entered the world. See? But not by Eve. It was by Adam. He said, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. See? Oh, I, I, there's a lot of things I need to talk about. See? Adam and Eve in the garden, when they were brought forth, they were in an innocent state. They were not. Neither one was negative or positive. They were both innocent before Yahweh. You look there in the second chapter in the last verse. So that they were naked and they were not ashamed. That was the state they were in back then. They were naked and not ashamed. So I'm trying to show you they were in an innocent state back here. And then Satan came to Eve and deceived Eve and caused her to transgress the law. See, and then she brought it to her husband and he did eat. Therefore, causing him to transgress the law. Yes, he transgressed the law. He was the one that brought mankind because it was the one that Yahweh gave the commandment to. But now, that's why Dr. Ken said that by his own, Adam brought it down by himself. He was the one. That, uh, let me say it this way. See, Adam, knowing what Yahweh had said, don't touch the fruit of that tree. When his wife came to him, see, he knowing what they always said, he willingly partook of the fruit and ate the fruit. See, and now somebody said, wait a minute, I don't believe it. Here's Dr. Kenny referring to it another time. And he said it this way. You have the religious world out there today trying to build a church on Peter. Peter was a confessed sinner. Fifth chapter of Luke in the 18th verse. See, he was a confessed sinner sinner. See, must, Dr. Kenny said, now if you're going to build a church on Peter, you might as well go and build it on Adam. Adam was a confessed sinner. See, somebody said, now wait, wait a minute. No, wait. Give me, give me Genesis 3 and 12. I'm going to stay in the book. And, the man and look, said, folks, I'm going to say something about this. When Israel did not have a book, did not have the Bible or the writings of Moses and the prophets, they did all kinds of wrong things. But when they found the book and found that they were wrong, 
they had to go to the book to get straightened out. See? And that's why I get about going to the book to get straightened out. See? Here we are. Read. And the man said. And the man said. The, woman, the one that Yahweh said, don't touch. The day you touch, you shall surely die. Now, Yahweh is coming to the man, and he's asking the man, what have you done? This is his answer. And the man said, the woman whom thou gavest to me with, with me. The woman that you gave us with me. She gave me of the tree. And she I gave did, me of the tree. And I did eat. Now, when he said, he, and I did eat. Now, the commandment was to him. We didn't say it to her, it said to him. She was in him, yes. But when he partook of that fruit of the tree, he died. And Dr. Kennedy referred it another way. He said over there in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, Apostle Paul saying that uh, in a moment, in the twinkling of the eye, we should all be changed. What was Paul looking at? He looking back there in the garden and seeing that that man in that innocent state, when he took the fruit of the tree, instantaneously he changed and went from an innocent state to condemnation. Yes, he died in his conscience. And that book death went upon all men and it came on down. Man's conscience was breaking him all the way down. See, and Apostle Paul, he's looking at the same thing coming down, talking about his end. When I would do good, evil was present. And when I would not do good, see, uh, everything he tried to do right, he found himself doing wrong. I'm trying to show the state that he was in. Then what happens? See, the old wretched man that I am, who should deliver me from this bond of sin? And then, and then he read over in the eighth chapter, verse one, Romans eight and one. He says, see, read. There is therefore, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Yahshua the Messiah. Now after the Messiah died, he paid the price to redeem this man back here. Also now he's got everybody all the way down. His blood atoned from Adam all the way down, even down to this world. Now what we're doing, we're preaching the gospel that a man might believe in him. Nobody else but Yahshua the Messiah. The salvation is not in nobody but Yahshua the Messiah. See? Dr. Kennedy said, I'm not your savior. I didn't save you. I said, I didn't share the blood, any blood for you. See, so he, came, he said, Yahshua was the only one to save the blood. And that made a difference. He made a difference even between Yahweh. See, so Yahweh didn't die for you. Elohim didn't die for you. Yahshua was a container for blood. That was the one that Yahweh accepted the blood from. So he had to die, take away all mankind. Said, so you got to believe in Yahshua's side. Now, here he is. See, when Paul said, see, uh, after he, he seen his condition that he was in, and Yahweh had delivered. So there's uh, 8 chapter verse 1. There's therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Yahshua the Messiah. Now you're gone. The law has been fulfilled. The Messiah has come in and fulfilled it. Now there's therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Yahshua Messiah who walk not after the flesh. See, I'm talking about the things back under the old covenant. Read. But after the spirit. But after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Yahshua the Messiah. For the law of the spirit of life, which is in Yahshua the Messiah. Hath made me free. Is made me free. From the law of sin and death. From the law of sin and death. This was the law of sin and death. L-S-D. When I was delivered from that, shook them things off, and set Yahshua aside, then I'm complete in Yahshua Messiah. I don't need no things back here. So now I see the Messiah come in. He fulfilled this thing, moved it out of the way. Now on this side, I stand now in Yahshua Messiah. There's no other name whereby man can be saved but in Yahshua. Yahweh, who has, uh, Yahweh, see, so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That's over in John 6, uh, 3 and 16. See, <clears throat> he loved the world so much. He came on in and died, the outcast dog. See, and then Yahweh took him, lifted him on up, and gave him a name above every name. That at the name of Yahshua, Sai, every knee going to have to bow down and say, praises unto Yahshua, Sai. And then after you said that, if you didn't believe him, it's still got to go on to the lake. Anyhow. See, Yahweh has set it up that way. Now, what I'm trying to get you to see. See, now, Dr. Kinley labored with us over and over again, trying to get us to see how this man 
came in, fulfilled the law and the prophecy, and moved it out of the way that we might have faith in Yahshua Messiah. That was what he come, and that's what he did. He accomplished that for us. And all we got to do on this side of the cross is to accept the blood of Yahshua Messiah. See what he come to do. Understand what he did for us. He came in and moved all this natural out of the way that we might just have, see, a chance for eternal life. Eternal life is in Yahshua Messiah. No other name. Now, I want to thank you for the time you give me this video. But I wanted to say something about this here. Yeah. And look, folks, I have the tapes to back up what I said. And somebody said, I don't want to be able to tape. Look, Dr. Kennedy on tapes, he said, listen, speak up loud. This is being recorded for later use. This is late times now. I'm using them. So I'm going back and listen to what they said. See, a lot of things are being said. I want to know what the truth of it is. And I'm willing to die for the things I've come to understand and know. See, and nobody's going to, look. I'm confident in the things that Dr. Kennedy taught me. I'm willing to talk to anybody about them. And I would like, if somebody has a disagreement with what I have to say, come and talk to me. Don't go talk to somebody else what he said and he said, if you don't understand what he said, come talk to me. I think that's fair. See, I was taught that by the founder. See, that was the way he taught things. He didn't say go and talk to somebody else about it. So you come talk to that person that you have a problem. And look, Dr. Kenny, after he explained something to us for the first time, see, Dr. Harris, he'll know. He put one, one, one of us got to get up there and, and, and tell it back to him to see if we got it right. He did that with all of us. See, and if we didn't get it right, he got back up and went back in it again. See, and then he, if he, he put you back up again. That was the way he checked us out. See, and look, he's, I, he, I got the tapes of him doing that with us. I got the tapes. See, I, I, got, I got enough information that's on these tapes to verify what I'm saying. And if anybody wants it, I'd be willing to share it with them. I ask, and I want to again thank the Southern Regional Convention for the invitation and the opportunity to address you this evening. Thank you very, very so much.